وَقُلْ جَاءَ الْحَقُّ وَزَهَقَ الْبَاطِلِ إِنَّ الْبَاطِلَ كَانَ زَهُوقًا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Is the Trinity a biblical concept? What is the evidence for the Trinity from the Bible? In their zeal to find the Trinity in the Bible, many Christians will appeal to isolated and random verses, such as Genesis 126, which reads, Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. The Christians will say that since God said us and our, he must have meant the three persons of the Trinity. But if that was the case, wouldn't it mean that humans were created in the image of all three persons? So in other words, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit? Of course not. More likely, the use of the words like us and our were used to signify God's status as king. Still zealous to find the elusive trinity, some Christians get so desperate that they appeal to verses like Isaiah 6.3. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. Since the word holy is used three times, these Christians argue, it must be referring to the Trinity. Mm, so you want to talk about the Trinity? Yeah. All right. That's a good thing, actually. Let me ask you. When you pray as a Muslim, do you say Allahu Akbar three times? Uh, Prove uh, me wrong. Believe, Prove me wrong. Believe. So why you say Allahu Akbar three times before you pray? The reality, of course, is that this is a non sequitur. The simpler explanation is that the word was said three times for emphasis. But arguably the most favored verse, or shall we say variant verse, comes from the New Testament in the first epistle of John, chapter 5, verses 7 through 8. Popular English translations, like the King James Version of the Bible, render the verse as For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. This is the smoking gun that desperate Christians have always been seeking. Daddy! <laughs> Shh. Daddy's here, Ducky. Shh. Uh, Ducky. Shh. Ducky. Ducky. Let's look at the verdict of one of the most respected biblical scholars, the late Brutz Metzger, in his book, A Textual Commentary on the Greek New Testament. In his discussion of the verse, he was straight to the point. That these words are spurious and ha have no right to stand in the New Testament is certain. Those are strong words. As proof for his conclusion, he offered first the external evidence. He stated that the passage is absent from every known Greek manuscript except eight, and these contain the passage in what appears to be a translation from a late recension of the Latin Vulgate. As for the eight manuscripts, the earliest is an addition made to a 10th century manuscript. Imagine, the earliest Greek manuscript to contain a variant verse in a document that was originally written in Greek is from almost 1,000 years after the document was written. And even in that case, the variant was apparently added to the manuscript even later. But Metzger wasn't done with the external evidence. He further stated that the passage is quoted by none of the Greek fathers who, had they known it, would would most certainly have employed it in the Trinitarian controversies, Sibelian and Arian. Its first appearance in Greek 
is in a Greek version of the Latin Acts of the Lateran Council in 1215. Further, he states, the passage is absent from the manuscripts of all ancient versions, Syriac, Coptic, Armenian, Ethiopic, Arabic, Slavonic, except for the Latin, and it is not found in the Old Latin in its early form, or in the Vulgate as a shoot by Jerome. Finally, he states, the earliest instance of the passage being quoted as a part of the actual text of the epistle is in a 4th century Latin treatise entitled Liber Apologeticus, attributed either to the Spanish heretic, Priscillian, died about 385, or to his follower, Bishop Instantius. Apparently, the gloss arose when the original passage was understood to symbolize the Trinity through the mention of three witnesses, the Spirit, the Water, and the Blood. So, the earliest mention of the verse as an actual text of the epistle is from a Latin treatise written by a heretic. This just keeps getting worse and worse. Finally, Metzger briefly discussed the internal probabilities. So he states, If the passage were original, no good reason can be found to account for its omission, either accidentally or in intentionally, by copyists of hundreds of Greek manuscripts and by translators of ancient versions. As regards intrinsic probability, the passage makes an awkward break in the sense. So it just does not belong in the text. It is a late gloss that was confused later on by scribes as being part of the original document. So the bottom line is that the Johannian comma was not part of the original first epistle of John. Sorry, Christians. We are deeply sorry. We're sorry. We're sorry. We're sorry. Sorry. We're sorry. We're sorry. This is why modern translations like the NIV translate the verse as follows. For there are three that testify the spirit, the water, and the blood, and the three are in agreement. Notice the footnote in verse 8. This footnote states, Late manuscripts of the Vulgate testify in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. So, the part in italics is what the later manuscripts of the Vulgate have. But some Christians still remain stubborn. They will claim that an early church father, Cyprian, Quote of the Johannine comma. First, even if this was true, Cyprian lived in the 3rd century. So all this would prove is that the variant existed by then. It does not prove that it was part of the original epistle of John. But the Christians do not even have this concession because even Christian scholars, such as Bill Brown of the Dallas Theological Seminary, have refuted the claim that Cyprian knew the Johannine comma. In a publication titled, Did Cyprian Quote the Comma Johannium? There's a link for it in the description. Brown provided numerous reasons for doubting Cyprian's familiarity with the verse, the most persuasive of which is that Cyprian failed to mention it in his most explicit exposition regarding the Trinity. One would think that when articulating and defending the Trinity in his writings, Cyprian would have mentioned the verse over and over again, but he did not. So in the final assessment, we have learned that when pressed for evidence from their scripture for the most important core doctrine of Christianity, Christians can only offer vague and isolated verses with fanciful interpretations, such as Genesis 126, or Isaiah 6 3, or variant verses like 1 John 5 7 through 8. None of these verses provides conclusive scriptural proof for the Trinity. To make matters worse, there is clear biblical support for a non Trinitarian worldview in verses like Mark 13 32, which states, but about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Only means only. This verse proves that the Son, even with two natures and the Holy Spirit, are not all-knowing. Hence, the Trinity is debunked. This leads to only one inevitable conclusion. The Trinity is not a biblical concept. More importantly, it proves that Jesus did not teach this concept to his disciples.
يا اهل الكتاب لا تغلوا في دينكم ولا تقولوا على الله الا الحق انما المسيح عيسى ابن مريم رسول الله وكلمته القاها الى مريم وروح منه فآمنوا بالله ورسله ولا تقولوا ثلاثة إنته خيرا لكم إنما الله إله واحد سبحانه أن يكون له ولد له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ وَكِيلًا O people of the scripture, do not commit excess in your religion, or say about Allah except the truth. The Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, was but a messenger of Allah and his word, which he directed to Mary, and a soul created at a command from him. So believe in Allah and his messengers, and do not say, three, desist, it is better for you. Indeed, Allah is but one God. Exalted is he above having a son. To him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth, and sufficient is Allah as disposer of affairs.